Good morning, folks. We've got a number of items to hit today and an update on our strangest prediction of the last decade. Now that it's blatantly obvious, it's coming to fruition. Let's start with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun brings bright active regions on the south and the dark coronal hole on the north. Solar flaring is low, but the solar wind from that coronal hole should provide enhanced plasma pressure on the magnetosphere early next week. The solar wind has been calm for days. A tiny speed increase overnight brings us only to low 300 kilometers per second range. To begin today's science, let's look at the molten ring. This lensing feature in space is definitively one of the most unique. The surrounding galaxies aren't exactly normal looking, particularly off the 10 to 11 o'clock position from the ring, but enough of the eye candy. Let's go to an excellent article on the various forms of baby planetary systems we see in the heavens. The nice review of the variety of cosmic nurseries comes with their favorite mechanism, the disk to rings to planets pattern. But of course, not all planets form this way, as rogue worlds are spotted forming like stars are supposed to form. For those who don't know, there are estimated to be as many rogue planets in the galaxy as there are stars. Only a half step to the side here as we come to the radio detection of a strange nature from Proxima Centauri. So far, they can't tell what it is or why it's so different than the previous radio signals from the sun's nearest neighboring star. They think the likely explanation is some human technological interference, but some astronomers are liking the ET idea. Frankly, given the record outburst we've seen in the last decade from Proxima and its presumed state further into or perhaps even through the galactic current sheet, changes in emission maybe should be expected. Folks, this next one is huge. If you remember Dr. Stacy McGaw from our Plasma Cosmology series and movie, and if you remember Dr. Mannheim's insistence that we cannot neglect the force from the rest of the universe just because it's far away, welcome to the new door in cosmology as they combine, but it'll also be the source of the next fight. It would appear that external field theory is correct. This is published in the Astrophysical Journal, and as just about everyone has given up on wimp dark matter now, some go for axions or other exotic particles, and others begin to look outside the box with modified gravity and modified Newtonian dynamics. Essentially, if I may amateurishly summarize what that means, it means that at low acceleration the force of gravity takes a bit stronger hold. This would explain why the slower outside of the galaxies rotate with the speed of much more mass-bearing regions. However, this is where the next battle begins. The external field is only external if you improperly define the system. In reality, everything is connected. There are no islands in space. But more importantly, this is where all of those huge halos, the extra plasma and dust that we've been sharing discovered by the astronomers, has still not made its way into the models for galactic rotation. After having engaged with over a hundred cosmologists and astronomers, I can tell you there is a bit of a hubris problem using cosmological models that characterize galactic and intergalactic boundaries by basically what technology could see in 1980. But folks, you may have noticed we've got bigger problems on Earth. We've been eyeing the Uranus move into Taurus for years now, and I don't care if you are gung-ho for astrology or you're like me. You just know for sure that some strangely powerful people on this planet believe in it. This 84-year cycle event has not been a kind one to humans. The last several times the mythological god of the sky and heavens entered Taurus, the bull, the house of two horns, it has begun with chaos and difficulty. It has led to tremendous war and a global reset of sorts. This is going to be a rough decade and maybe more, and we've been eyeing 2019 and 2020 as the start of chaos for almost a decade now. The Revolutionary War, Civil War, World War II, and whatever comes next. At this moment, the top candidate, if you have an unbiased rational bone in your body, has to be China. But like I said, it doesn't matter if you believe in it, either fate or controlling powers on this planet sure do. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.